and I'm uh, delighted that uh, you came uh, uh, closer to the source uh, to watch uh, the screen and look at it because pictures don't lie. People talk, never mind them. Pictures don't lie. I'm proposing uh, several things to think about uh, at the same time. Uh, as you heard, freedom, beauty, evolution, nature, um, these are long words, and I could add to this uh, other words, uh, change, time, hierarchy, and um, I think you'll agree that uh, these are very different things. Uh, you would not confuse the human perception of uh, freedom or beauty with uh, that of uh, time and change. Uh, because there is so much in the title and so little time to cover the, uh, the subject, which is actually in my books, um, I selected only two points to make for you tonight. Number one, different does not mean unrelated. So that's the first point I'll address. The second is that <clears throat> if we, sorry, if you know the relationship, then, and that the relationship includes your own relatives in the, on this planet, then you have the power to predict evolution, which means to predict the future. So let me begin uh, with uh, these words uh, one or two at a time. We have here one drawing that appears the same way in the river delta and in the human lung. The delta is inanimate, not the object of biology. The human lung is animate, uh, not the object of geophysics. The river deltas on, on this earth are much, much older than uh, the lungs of, uh, of mammals. And so, right away, we see that the configuration is the relation. Con configuration unites the animate with the inanimate. The drawing, the object of the great artists of <laughs> Paris, is the phenomenon. The image, the baby of evolution, is the phenomenon. And it is universal. It is nature itself. This is just the first example. Um, by the way, the, um, the human lung, the river delta, they're also known as arborescent architectures uh, or tree-shaped designs or hierarchical structures. Well, uh, all of us are participants in uh, that kind of flow. On the left, the simplest drawing of a human movement in the city. It is not the grid. We, don't, we do not trace the grid as we move, meaning in our lives. We congregate, we converge on points of attraction. For example, the, uh, the river basin in pink as a crowd. And then two hours later, for example, after the basketball game, the same crowd spreads on the territory as a circular river delta. So human life or city design, urban design is of the same nature as on the first slide. In other words, it is evolution and configuration occurring by itself, and you'll see very soon morphing all the time to a flow toward greater access, just like the milk spilled on the kitchen floor. It doesn't talk to you, the milk, but, it, <laughs> but its image, its picture does not lie. So. Uh, another thing, uh, a word that will occur a little bit later, is scanning. If you don't like uh, tree-shaped flows, uh, think of it as, uh, as your own feet. Uh, with your feet and mine, we're scanning the area, the area of the inhabited territory. So human life scans the, the surface, the surface of the earth. Uh, by the way, this drawing on the left is uh, the simplest possible. It omits uh, the um, dead ends and the cul-de-sacs. Uh, if you're interested in those, a um, friend of mine, a co-author, co a biologist, sent me the picture just a month ago from uh, forest in uh, Costa Rica. Uh, the leaf, the nerves of the leaf, show you in every spot 
the dead ends and the cul-de-sacs. The rest of the design is just like uh, the so-called animate on the left. You see that? So uh, configuration is the relation, or the, the drawing, or the image, the design unites. Um, I make here a, um, a footnote. Uh, it's like I'm slipping into a, a speaking shop um, in physics. There are a few hard facts that must be taken into account because everybody, well, sorry, everything obeys the laws of physics. Um, on the previous uh, slides, I showed you flows, flows, movements, flow of water in the river delta, the movement of these, uh, um, let's call them animate vehicles called people in the city. Well, nothing moves unless it is pushed. And the pushing, I'm reading the, what I wrote, <laughs> The pushing comes from power. Power comes from engines. Uh, the, most of the engines uh, available are actually natural, as I'll show you in a second. Um, engines. The engines uh, producing power. The power forces move, uh, movement or flow to happen. And that movement, the relative motion against the environment, dissipates the power instantly. So it's a very simple um, a piece of uh, uh, indisputable physics. Fuel, power, movement, dissipation. In other words, heat again after dissipation. And the, uh, the generation of power and the movement happen at the same time with the dissipation. The biggest engine uh, accessible to our observation is the Earth itself pictured in the upper right-hand corner. Heating comes from the left. Um, it uh, strikes uh, Earth, and the same heat current then um, um, spreads itself into the uh, cold universe. Uh, the engine of Earth has no taker for its power. There's no external entity to use that power. Therefore, Earth dissipates its own power, and it dissipates it through all its shells that flow. It, Earth is like an onion. The, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The, 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 uh, the shells of the onion are moving at different speeds and they rub against each other and they dissipate this power constantly. Without dissipation, you can think of that as friction, the shells of Earth would be accelerating <laughs> out of control. So the reason why we have a steady state, or stasis, uh, or climate for that matter, on Earth is because of this uh, uh, two-sided uh, coin, power and dissipation, uh, hand in glove, at the, at the same time uh, in a perfect balance. On the left-hand side, the circuit executed by water and nature. It's a tiny, tiny um, uh, you know, window into what happens uh, in, inside the shells of, of Earth, meaning that this slide is about everything that's accessible to our senses. Another thing is that in time, all these flows that are uh, pictured here by, um, by Adrian and the students uh, are changing, they're evolving. You can pick one and you'll see that uh, tomorrow it will look, the same, uh, will look, it will look different. Uh, Change happens because of freedom. We're getting to the F word, freedom. Without freedom, there is no change. Okay? And uh, so freedom through changes means evolution. And those two words <coughs> are the longer version of speaking the word uh, nature or uh, natura, the deity responsible for giving birth to everything that is, including uh, all of us and our uh, uh, relatives, the animate and the inanimate. To the principle that uh, summarizes this introduction, it is uh, the constructive law that um, I uh, wrote uh, during a moment of uh, total freedom um, a few years ago. For a flow system, that means one of these uh, drawings that I've been showing you, to persist in time, and that means to be alive, as opposed to dead and buried, uh, that must evolve, which means to change, 
with freedom such that it offers greater access to what flows. Uh, this language was picked by me intentionally so that uh, it is non-denominational. You can fit uh, whatever uh, doctrine uh, in which you are brought up, for example, biology or, or electricity or, uh, or hydrology. It does not matter. The point is, again, back to the uh, spilled milk on the kitchen floor, uh, this is a, a way in which to speak a language just like English, when, uh, <clears throat> that's called Esperanto, that's welcoming everybody. And in the green, I have an example of, uh, meaning an illustration of what the upper words really mean. Uh, the birth of a river base, b basin on the floor of a lab laboratory is uh, like uh, a movie. In, here, in this case, just uh, three uh, screens from uh, the ribbon of celluloid in an old uh, film. And uh, from time to time, um, the uh, river basin changes. But it is a river basin. Uh, you draw one tree, and uh, it's bullseye every time. The movie tape runs one way, from left to right. That is the uh, direction of evolution, where the uh, meaning of uh, the word in uh, quotations. And uh, in other words, we get here to the arrow of time, uh, which is the direction of evolutionary design. Uh, to the right, somewhere near or far, is the so-called future, which is uh, different than the present. We also uh, stumble upon the physical meaning of time itself. Time is the change from one snapshot to the next. In other words, the, uh, the, uh, the viewer of this particular image um, gets the idea that uh, things are changing, and they are changing again and that, uh, yes, the drawing evolves. So this is the, uh, the unifying um, thought, which uh, takes me to uh, uh, about two examples that um, hopefully will, uh, will illustrate uh, the abstract a little bit better. With the constructor law, uh, many authors have, uh, by invoking the constructor law, have predicted uh, phenomena of the present and the past, but also of the future. One of them is locomotion, which really means the movement of something from a, a locus, loco, to, an, to one place to another place. Uh, this particular drawing up on the left is uh, uh, bird flight. Uh, most of us think that birds fly uh, cruise at, uh, at uh, constant altitude. And uh, well, that's uh, the, simplest, uh, the simplest thought. Um, except that um, the bird, or a bird, um, is uh, known uh, for uh, flapping its wings at a, with a particular frequency. And the frequency has to do with the fact that the trajectory is actually not uh, uniform altitude. It is a zigzag. If you look closely at the drawing, the head of the bird is, uh, is going up and then going down, depending on the, the position of the wings. And that zigzag is the rhythm, which has to do with, um, without getting into details, the balance between uh, the effort of lifting the body, which is called WY, and the effort of penetrating through the, uh, through the opposing medium, which is WX. The environment is not getting out of the way unless work is done on it. So this is a key point, movement, means getting the immediate environment out of the way. Movement, which really means life, is synonymous with impact on the environment. Remember that. And that is physics. In other words, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, physics has its laws. Physics cannot be violated or opposed. Those who deny physics end up uh, regretting it. <laughs> OK, so from this uh, very, very simple idea, one predicts uh, those uh, straight lines in the lower right, which uh, tell this is the uh, back of the envelope, eyes closed, uh, not picking at nature at all. Um, pre one predicts that big bodies, birds, uh, dogs, fish, big bodies 
should be faster. Those are the straight lines. Uh, uh, in today's uh, knowledgeable uh, in the industry, uh, one cannot publish ideas like these uh, straight lines. One has to compare the, the predictions with uh, data, data, data. So uh, we went through that trouble, these uh, colored balloons, to convince the, uh, the, the judges that, um, that um, we're not smoking something, you see. <laughs> And um, the other way to summarize the package is uh, these three words on the left. Uh, from the swimmers to the flyers, uh, meaning the arrow of time, the arrow of time of life spreading on Earth is from left to right upward toward more space, which means access, toward greater speeds, which also means access, and toward more and more economical movement. I can get in details and tell you that uh, if you have a one kilogram bird, a one kilogram fish, to travel, say, uh, 10 meters, the bird consumes uh, one-tenth of the energy that the swimmer consumes. You see this uh, plainly when you compare the uh, effort of the uh, swimmer at the Olympics uh, on the 100 meter. With, uh, and the speed of that swimmer with the equivalent uh, measures for the uh, winner of the 10 meter dash. So, uh, and it, of course, the, uh, the athlete is not, a, uh, <laughs> is not a fish and not a dog, but, uh, but uh, the physics uh, doesn't care. Physics is about everything and is very, very simple. So this is one, uh, one example of what one does with the principle. Um, here is uh, another thing, and now we're coming closer to who we are. Um, the, um, the movers we know best are uh, animals with vision. Uh, most of the, uh, the examples you find in uh, zoology and other books uh, belong to, uh, to the uh, animals that came after the Cambrian explosion 560 million years ago. And uh, the reason I bring up uh, vision is that uh, movement is one thing, but movement in a straight line or aimlessly is not nature. The mover, the mover is endowed with, with, uh, with uh, the ability to sense the environment so that the mover does not uh, run into the wall or into the tree trunk. In other words, million after million of years, movers have, have acquired memory of what is useful and what is not. In other words, to go along safe and beneficial um, paths. And one of those is what I see, what I show you in this picture. Uh, people, people uh, unwitting, unwittingly are attracted to uh, things that uh, are shaped this way. You um, remember the art galleries that you frequent? Most of the famous paintings that hang in those places are shaped uh, like the photograph in the upper left, or like the flags of nations, or like uh, my business card, or like, no, no, or like the paragraph uh, in a piece of text, or a group of e equations between those paragraphs. Um, now we get the idea, to, uh, to spill uh, secrets about my own profession, that when we read a text, uh, we actually don't have that much time, so we read uh, one paragraph at a time. Uh, okay, and then we move on. If the paragraph is <laughs> not attractive, we turn the page. And uh, so this is how I arrived at the, at the physics definition of beauty. Uh, it means attractiveness. Um, and um, I think I covered that subject. Now, why do people like objects that are shaped this way? Uh, facades of buildings. And... Uh, faces of people. Uh, they are described um, um, in politically correct terms, not as beautiful, but uh, proportioned, or with balance, or uh, not out of shape. Why? Because that shape is scanned by the two human eyes the fastest. We don't know that, but this is, this is what's happening. The eyes are, in fact, scanning the area, just like the pedestrian in the, in the city. And there are two eyes, meaning that uh, the scanning in the vertical direction is uh, one uh, time scale, 
the um, scanning in the horizontal direction is the same time scale, but the speed of uh, span scanning from uh, left to right is greater because where one uh, eye uh, uh, finishes, the other one takes, takes over. So uh, overall, faster scanning happens in a two-dimensional image that uh, has the uh, shape of the uh, binocular field of vision of the two-eyed animal. So we have now beauty uh, as a uh, as a evolutionary design, meaning uh, called attractiveness, which covers everything that helps um, locomotion. It, uh, the animal endowed with uh, this uh, ability uh, grasps the environment faster, uh, senses danger faster. Therefore, this design is good for life. It is also good for finding food, finding mate, finding shelter before another animal finds shelter. Everything else is, uh, is good and is the basis for everybody's preference for this. And I'm quite sure that uh, these animals that do not speak have the same preferences. Uh, by the way, why? Why the same preferences? Because the world that the two-eyed animal is scanning is flat. The field of vision is aligned with the horizon, which is this way. And uh, well, anyway, the name for that is the world is flat. Uh, <laughs> correct. Um, and now this takes me to the, uh, to the slide that um, puts uh, everything together. Speaking of scanning, um, the upper left shows uh, the, uh, the bigger surface that uh, uh, people are scanning today is the surface of the globe. Uh, the drawing is about uh, the uh, movement uh, that's due to aviation. It is hierarchical. It's arborescent. It is a uh, river basin of people. And, um, and uh, <laughs> the performance, where the measure of, uh, meaning <laughs> the numbers that justify my drawing, are shown in the, in the square on the left. On the abscissa, which is the horizontal line, I plotted the... Um, the fuel consumed by every country during one year. One black dot is one country. And on the ordinate, I plotted the wealth reported by that country for that year. Uh, this is a discovery uh, akin to uh, that of Robinson Crusoe on the island. Uh, he thought he was alone, meaning Adrian the engineer on the abscissa. And, uh, uh, Robinson Crusoe finally discovers uh, Friday. Uh, Friday, in this case, is the economist on the ordinate, in the vertical direction, who calls uh, uh, fuel consumption by another name called wealth. So wealth is synonymous with fuel consumption, which, of course, through the physics I showed you earlier, means movement. So wealth is movement also known as life. And, uh, and finally, the red arrow is uh, what you discover if you compare these reports uh, year after year. All the uh, individuals and the groups in the world uh, are striving to become wealthier, to increase their uh, economic activity and so on. So there is a migration on the diagonal, very much like that inside the peloton of, of cyclists in the Tour de France. And um, so that's, uh, that's the basis for switching to the right-hand side and uh, plot the same data a different way. Uh, the, the red arrow is the same. What was the energy consumption on the bottom line on the left is now energy consumption on the vertical on the right. And on the abscissa, where the, uh, the horizontal base of the right-hand drawing, I have the, the, uh, a measure of the degree of economic freedom in those countries. So to summarize, all the dots are migrating upward. And I would say, unbeknownst to most of these uh, bicyclists, uh, every dot is migrating toward greater freedom. And here we arrive at the, at the history of civilization in the 
Okay, long history that we are taught in the school, of antiquity and after. Um, that is the past, and based on the physics that I just uh, put in front of you, that is the future. So freedom goes hand in hand with fuel consumption and with wealth, of course with movement, and that means life. So the, uh, the two uh, points I tried to um, illustrate for you today, and I hope I did, was number one, uh, different does not mean unrelated. And number two, if you know the <laughs> relation, <laughs> that is, if you know your own relatives, you are able to, uh, to understand the past uh, and the present and to predict the future. And that is actually extremely important to know what and how things should be. Thank you.